Hello students, a warm welcome to you all. So this video is for class four students and we are starting with chapter number one, plants and this is part A of plants. Let's begin. So let's see the topics covered for today. General characteristics of plants, which you would have done in your previous classes also. So we'll kind of revise it. Preparation and storage of food in plants and photosynthesis. So this is all for this video. Let's begin. General characteristics of plants. So here, what do we see? So if we see the picture of this plant, so here you have a shoot system. Okay. And this is the root system. Whatever is below the ground is the root system and above the ground comes shoot system, right? So as you can see, there is roots. This is a kind of fruit which is known as tap root. So in this picture, this is a tap root which we'll be studying in our next lectures. So for now, it's a tap root. It's not a fibrous root. So because it has a single thick root in between, right? So now you have stem, you have a bud over here, leaves, fruits, flowers. Okay. All this consists of the shoot system. So here you have an internode as well. This point is called node. Okay. So let's go ahead and see the points. Point number one. Plants have roots that fix them in the soil which lie below the ground and absorb water minerals from the soil. Right. So what it does, it absorbs water and minerals and it also makes them fix into the soil. Right. That help them to fix in the soil. The stem grows above the ground, right? And helps to carry water, minerals and food to all part of the plants, right? To all part of the, this is the way we can, uh, the plants can get water, minerals, food, if it can carry, the stem can carry, okay? Leaves helps plant to prepare food with the help of water and carbon dioxide in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll. So what is this known as? This process is known as photosynthesis. We shall be studying in the next slides. So now, most plants bear flowers that change into fruit. Those are called flowering plant, plants. There are also some non-flowering plants, okay? Fruits have seeds that give rise to new plants. Plants breathe through stomata, which is tiny pores present mostly on the lower surface of the leaves. So we'll be doing it in the upcoming slides. Okay, about this. New plants either grew from seeds or other part of the plants, right? Plants cannot move from one place to another, but can show body movements. In general, you don't see any plants jumping from one place to another, right? But it's very common for some of the plants like sunflower. Take an example of sunflower. As in the sun moves, the sunflower faces towards the sun, right? Next. Preparation and storage of food in plants. Okay. So now, a plant prepares food. Not only for itself, for, but for the whole of the living world, right? So it's the plant. We all, in some or the other form, we eat plants and we get energy from it, right? So it's not just for itself, but it's for the whole of the living world. Herbivorous will eat plants. Then the car carnivorous will eat herbivorous, right? So almost everybody is in some or the other way dependent on the plants. Most plants depend on their leaves to make food. Since leaf is the place where food is prepared, it is called the kitchen or the food factory of the plant. So wherever our food is prepared, we call it as a kitchen, right? So let's call leaves is also known as the food factory of the plant. So now we see here two pictures. This one is the part of the leaf so let me just show how so this is the part of the leaves other parts of the leaf and this is the stomata so 
let's start from here from the parts of the leaves the flat part of the leaf okay is known as the leaf blade so this is the flat part of the leaf okay this is known as leaf blade the flat part okay running through the middle of the leaf is the main vein okay which is also this part this is the main vein as you can see the cursor main vein or it is also known as mid rib or a main vein there are two names associated with this or it's also known as mid rib there are a number of side veins you can see so many side veins right coming out from the main vein okay the main vein what is the function of this and this is the main vein and this these are the side veins have tiny tubes inside them okay so what it does there are two these are, you can't see from the naked eyes so there are tiny tiny tubes inside them we also call them venules okay these tubes are also known as venules so what is the purpose of this it helps to carry water and mineral to all the part of the leaf not just it will not just carry water and mineral to the part of the leaf but also the food prepared to other parts of the plant so this food that the leaf is preparing in its kitchen or the food factory of the plant which is also known as a leaf so it will not just the leaf will use it it will be used by the entire plant right so from here it will go and it will nourish the entire plant now the tip let's come to the tip of the leaf it is also known as leaf apex this is known as leaf apex so if you draw this in the house if you just practice drawing this diagram and you put the names here if you write two three times by that by that time you'll remember all the names okay so you just need to practice it also at home so now leaf is attached to the stem by the means of so this leaf is attached to the stem this is called the stem see here stem this is the stem to the by the means of a stalk this part is known as stalk or it is also known as petiole okay but stalk is a very common name this is known as a stalk okay and this point where it is attached to the stem this point is known as axil okay and this one is known as the leaf base okay so now mostly the underside of the leaf so let's come to let's just jump to this picture so this is the leaf and here you have a underside okay underside of the leaf has many small 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 pores okay called stomata so this is this is the picture of the stomata can you see this and you can't see this from the naked it's, it's extremely tiny naked eyes can't see it okay so here they have enlarged this picture and here you can see stomata so one single is known as stoma so the singular form is stoma stoma and a group of stoma is known as stomata stomata so you have to remember all these names very very important okay mostly the underside of the leaf has many small pores called stomata now what does it do now what is the purpose of this stomata it helps in exchange of gases can you see the gases this is carbon dioxide co2 carbon dioxide it goes in right and what comes out o2 which is the oxygen and h2o this is the water so what comes in is carbon dioxide what comes out oxygen and h2o which is the water so it helps in exchange of gases during the breathing which you can also call it breathing right and photosynthesis okay we cannot see the spores with the naked eyes how what and all happens you, you can't see with the naked eyes okay so this is the here you see the open stoma during when the stoma is open can you see this opening this one so the carbon dioxide goes in this one right and when there is a closed stoma see there is no space in between right so this is a closed stoma during the closed stoma the oxygen and h2o comes out okay so now this is the purpose of stomata so the main purpose of stomata is to 
for exchange of gases. Okay, exchange of gases. Let's go next. So now we have, let's see this picture. What is this? This is photosynthesis. Isn't it? Photosynthesis. Why photo? Because it's related to sun, right? So <clears throat> let's start. So what is the photosynthesis? The process by which green plants, okay, make their own food using carbon dioxide. Can you see carbon dioxide? What goes in? Let's just see, see the pictures first. In this picture, you can see carbon dioxide is going in, right? Sunlight is going in. Water is also going in. So what it is using? It is using carbon dioxide and water in the presence of sun, right? Very, very, very important. In the presence of sun. And what goes out? Oxygen and sugars. Here, sugar doesn't mean the regular sugar that you eat. This is a kind of glucose. Basically, glucose is a kind of sugar. So, a kind of sugar is glucose which comes out. Okay. So, oxygen and glucose comes out. Okay. Now, the process by which green plants make their food. And where do they make food? They make food in the leaves. Right. Where, where this process, all this photosynthesis, it's not happening everywhere. It is happening in the leaves, right? So, green plants make their food using carbon dioxide, water in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll is known as photosynthesis, right? You can see here, carbon dioxide plus water in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll. What is chlorophyll? Right? What is chlorophyll? We'll come to know about chlorophyll now. Okay. So, photosynthesis. Photo means light and synthesis means to put together. That's why we have sun here, right? So, photosynthesis. Leaves use carbon dioxide from air, isn't it? And water from the soil. See, from the soil, the water goes in. In the presence of sunlight, which is trapped by the green pigment. There is a green pigment, which is known as chlorophyll. Chlorophyll. So, leaves contains chloroplast, okay, which, which are organelles that contain chlorophyll. So, these are the organelles. A part of the leaf, it has a chloroplast, okay. Inside the chloroplast, it contains chlorophyll. And what is a chlorophyll? It is a pigment that absorbs sunlight. So, this is the pigment that absorbs sunlight. Without absorbing sunlight, there is no way this process is going to be completed. That's why sunlight is so, so important for the plants. Not just if you nourish the plant, if you give water or everything, take care of it. Uh, you know, put uh, give uh, the, all the required minerals. And if you don't put it under the sun, as per the required sunlight for that particular plant, it is not possible for the leaves to make food. Because in the process of sunlight only, this can be done. The chlorophyll in the chloroplast absorbs energy from the sun and converts into chemical energy. The leaves also have tiny openings called stomata, which we studied in the last slide, which allow plant to take in carbon dioxide from the air and gives out what? Oxygen. So, this stomata is responsible for the exchange of gases. So, carbon dioxide goes in and oxygen comes out for us to use it, right? We human beings, animals, we all use. That's why we should be thankful to our plants, right? So, <clears throat> let's go next. The food is formed in the form of glucose. So, what we saw here. So, food is formed in the form of glucose, which is a kind of sugar, right? It is a kind of sugar. So, what comes out? We get water plus, uh, we get um, oxygen plus glucose, right? From the plants. The plant uses this food for getting 
energy and producing more branches and leaves obviously that's the food of the plant so it will be help this will help for the nourishment of the plants which is the having more branches more leaves right making flowers fruits and seeds and and not just that repairing the damaged part of the plant isn't it so when it, sometimes you'll feel the plant is uh, when the plant is not getting enough sunlight you'll see the plants are not look so dull and dry right the moment you give nourishment you give water and all the minerals to the plants and then you put it in the sunlight you'll instantly see that after some hours you'll see the, the leaves are really fresh you can see the change right or maybe in a couple of days so it that is the process of repairing the damaged part right the damaged parts of the plants are getting repaired now extra glucose obviously when the glucose in it there will be something extra right so it is stored in the form of starch in different parts like root leaf stem etc so now all this starch will be stored where root leaf stem etc right so now let's look at this next part different part of the plants used as a food so we use different different parts like roots flower leaves stem seeds we use it as a food isn't it roots for example if you see you have carrots you have beetroot and others right these are the roots flowers this is artichoke then there is broccoli you have cauliflower these are the flowers of the plant now we have leaves we have spinach you have cabbage and you have different other leafy vegetables right now we have stem so this is the celery what is this asparagus these are all the stem of the plant and then you have seeds you have corn you have peas beans these are the seed part of the plant so we use all so many different different part of the plant it's so so important for us right we use it as a food now let's come to the practice question okay so question number 1 which part of the plant is known as the food factory so what did we study which what is the food factory where the food is made the kitchen of the plant so the answer is leaves right so leaves is known as the kitchen of the plant or the food factory where the food is prepared right next question question number 2 which gas is needed by the plants to make food in its leaves so what is needed by the plant plant needs carbon dioxide right to make food and it gives out oxygen isn't it so it takes in carbon dioxide so it is needed by the plant to make food very simple question number 3 what is the process called by which plants make their food in their leaves so the process is known as the process process of making food is known as photosynthesis next what is the main food made by plants in their leaves during photosynthesis so what comes out the plants gets glucose right the glucose and oxygen is given out so that is the main what is the main food made by the plants so this is the glucose which is used by the plants right and which is made during photosynthesis question number 5 which part of the leaf is responsible for trapping sunlight during photosynthesis so what part of the leaf so as we remember what is what is responsible so that thing is called the the, the pigment the pigment which is present in the green leaves is known as chlorophyll and where it is located it is located in the chloroplast so the part of the leaf which is responsible for trapping sunlight during photosynthesis is chloroplast so these are very simple questions so as you have studied uh, all the pointers before so i think we are done with this video Thank you all of you for watching the video. Thanks.